Hello, I am so excited to begin this series on Hebrews. I have been a lover of God for a very long time. I have been a Bible student for a long time. But I began to realize, I heard podcasts and I hear our church pastors refer to scriptures in Hebrews, but I never felt I grasped the richness of Hebrews. I recently saw a person standing in a clear box, a cash cube it was called. A fan in the cube caused dollar bills to fly around and the person in the box grasped wildly for the dollar bills as they swirled around. It made me think of Hebrews. <laughs> this is how I have felt. I know there are some scriptures in Hebrews with unquestionable treasure. I know about the Hall of Faith chapter, but I feel like I'm in the box with Hebrews 303 valuable verses swirling around. And I might grasp at one of those Hebrews verses now and again, but I didn't have enough context to actually put the verse in my heart and my mind. This is God's treasure chest of his words, and I need to write them on my heart and mind in the Holy Spirit power. So my prayer for this Hebrew series is for you and me to really treasure each of the 303 verses of Hebrews and to understand God's intent for this valuable book. To treasure these Holy Spirit words as God intended us to treasure it. Hebrews breaks nicely into three divisions, and I'm going to refer to these divisions as we go along. Hebrews chapter 1 through the middle of chapter 4 is Jesus Christ, a superior person. And then Hebrews chapter 4 through the middle of chapter 10, Jesus Christ is, is the superior priest. And then chapters 9, 10 through 13, Jesus Christ is the source of faith superior source of faith. Hebrews has this great verse that ties all three of these divisions together. And so it's good for us to memorize this verse for Hebrews. It's Hebrews 4, chapter 4, verse 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. So this is my prayer for our Hebrews study together. Since Jesus Christ is a superior person, the Son of God, and he is a superior priest ascending into heaven, we can cast our life on the faith he has given us. Doesn't that sound fantastic? Well, please open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 1. Grab a pen and a paper and please pray with me. Lord, it is our greatest desire that you, as the Son of God, make yourself known to us superior over anyone and anything else. And then as we understand you as our high priest, superior in atonement, superior in forgiveness, Lord, help us to run to you uh, over anything and anyone else to give us relief of our sins and then, Lord, in the superior faith that you offer, help us to cast our feet so firmly in these truths of, of you as our great creator, our great redeemer of our lives. In your precious holy name, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Well, Hebrews is found in the New Testament. So it's in the section of the epistles or letters to 21 of New Testament's 27 books. It covers Romans to Jude. That's the epistles. And all of the epistles or letters are written to address a problem. And in the case of Hebrews, these second generation believers were really struggling. You see, it was 68 AD and Jesus hadn't returned yet. And at 30 years, they were being persecuted and they were discouraged and they were facing sharp opposition from their Jewish families. They were ostracized from Jewish worship. They faced great hostility from even the Gentile authorities. And so some drifted away, leaving Christianity altogether. The long expected return of Jesus, 30 years to set things straight, seemed delayed beyond endurance. 
how timely for us today too. Christians living in the 21st century, Christians around the world face horrible life-ending persecution from family and authorities. People who once claimed to follow Jesus Christ have drifted away. Many Christian families have replaced Christ as the center of their lives with more socially popular ideals, right? You can think of those things, sports, careers, entertainment. So the writer of Hebrews says, look up, look up, Jesus is coming. Turn your eyes to Jesus and let me remind you why. Because Jesus is superior to any of that. Jesus is the most supreme person. Jesus is the most superior priest and Jesus offers the superior source of faith than anyone else. Do you remember this old hymn? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things, the, the worthless things, the horrible things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Hebrews forces all Christians in the first and 21st century to ask key questions. Do I believe Jesus is God? Do I believe Jesus' perfect life on earth as God's son, Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection completed the work of my salvation? Do I believe Jesus did that? Or am I trusting anything else for my eternity? As we begin Hebrews chapter 1, there is no typical greeting or gentle introduction like we see in the other epistles. We don't know who the writer is, but we know the writer gets urgently down to business and hang on because every word is like a fire hydrant of truth soaking deep to penetrate your soul that's what the author wants us to feel so he starts out and he gives us five truths of the person of Jesus Christ so let's read Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact reputation, representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he provided purification for sins, he sat down in the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Right there, we get four visuals of who Jesus is. So let's uncover these and kind of summarize them together. So the first truth of the person of Jesus is Jesus is God's final word to the world. He said in these last days, he is spoken to us by his son. In first century AD, they thought they were in the last days, and perhaps we feel like we're in the last days. There is urgency to Hebrews' message. Listen, read it, study it, absorb it, and obey it. See, in the Old Testament, God spoke audibly through prophets and through angels and through dreams and even through Balaam's donkey. Jesus' own voice was, God's own voice was heard by the people. But when Jesus, the son of God, was born on the planet earth, God said, this is how I'm going to speak to you, through my son, Jesus Christ. Our second truth is Jesus uh, made and sustains the entire universe. That's the second truth about God. Hebrews says, through whom Jesus made the universe, sustaining all things by his powerful word. The Bible is clear. Jesus was present at the creation of the universe. In Genesis, God said, let us make man in our own image. And John chapter one says, through him, Jesus, all things were made. Without Jesus, nothing was made that has been made. So Jesus made the universe and everything in it. And Jesus sustains the universe by his own power. Jesus is not a created being. Jesus is the creator. The third truth of Jesus we see here is Jesus perfectly reflect God, reflects God's glory and God's character. Hebrews said the sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact reputation, representation of his being. <laughs> you might have heard this. A little boy was drawing intently when his dad asked, son, what are you drawing? And the little boy said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And his dad smiled and said, son, no one knows what God looks like. And the boy said, they will when I finish. 
<laughs> we know from scripture, people saw Jesus and Jesus is the shining presence of God. God is spirit, but God graciously revealed himself to us when he came to earth in the glorious person of Jesus Christ. When people saw Jesus, they were seeing God himself. And Jesus made that claim. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. That's in John 14, chapter 14, verse 9. The next truth we learn about Jesus is Jesus alone redeems sinners. Hebrews says, after Jesus had provided purification for sins, only a sinless sacrifice could cleanse us. We are all sinners, every one of us. Every one of us is separated from God and captive in slavery because of our sin. This is the story for everyone who has ever walked on earth, you and me. Everyone except Jesus. Jesus was perfect. Jesus died to redeem us, to buy us out of sin's slavery. Jesus cleansed us from our sin by living a perfect life, by dying, by raising, and in this, he became our perfect sinless sacrifice, the only sacrifice God would accept. He purified us from our sins, and what's even more, he redeemed us as his bride. Jesus' death, was lavish grace, undeserved grace, for us to have a restored forever relationship with God. The fifth truth about Jesus we have learned is Jesus rules the universe. Verse three says he then sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. When Jesus made the final sacrifice as our high priest, he made this victorious shout on the cross. He shouted to telestai, that means it is finished. Jesus says, my work is finished. I can sit down. I am victorious over everything. And today, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, waiting eagerly for the Father to say, Son, go claim your bride and bring her home. Jesus reigns in absolute authority over the universe today and forever. Well, now we're going to move to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4 and we find Jesus is superior to angels. Well that's an interesting place to go, right? Not right off the bat here. Why angels? Well this letter was written to believers who were being enticed, tempted to compromise their belief in Jesus's authority and superiority over the universe. And the, 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 the provoking thought was if these persecuted Christians would agree Jesus was just an angel, they would be allowed back into the Jewish synagogue. But what are angels anyway? Well, before the creation of man, God had created angels, supernatural beings. They're great worshipers of God. They're fierce warriors for God and they're swift rescuers of mankind. God may assign angels a task, but when it is done, they fade into the background. We see that throughout scripture. So the author gives then five reasons Jesus is superior to angels. The first is because Jesus is God's son. That's verses four and five. So which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son? God gave him the most excellent name, son. My dad, he calls my brother, son or number one, and he calls my husband, his son-in-law, son or number two. <laughs> son or number one will always have the superior place in my dad's heart. Do you know the Bible records 256 names for Jesus? But for God the Father, son is the most Excellent, the most tender name. And the author proves this from scripture. Interesting about Hebrews, all quotes are from the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. And so the first quote is in verse five. Your Bible footnote is gonna take you back to Psalms chapter two, verse seven. And as you see these, I encourage you to reach these passages. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And the second quote is from Samuel, second Samuel chapter seven, verse 14. I will be his father and he will be my son. No angel ever had such a relationship with God the Father. So Jesus is superior because he is God's one and only Son. 
Second, Jesus is superior to receive all worship. Verse 6 says, and again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels worship him. Jesus doesn't worship angels. Jesus doesn't even worship with the angels. Jesus is the object of their worship forever. Jesus is always the one being worshipped. At his birth, we see that in Luke chapter 2, the angels come and worship. And as Jesus reigns in heaven, Revelation chapter 5, John says, And then I looked and I heard the voices of many angels around the throne, the living creatures, the elders, thousands upon thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Do you remember reading that from Revelation? The angels lead in this worship. Jesus is superior to receive all of our worship. Created, all created beings worship. Third, Jesus is superior because he is God's anointed one. We're going to come around to this. The author quotes Psalm uh, chapter 104, verse 4, and so let's read verse 7. In speaking of angels, he says, He makes his angels winds, uh, his servants flames of fire. You see, angels respond to the instructions of God. In verses 8 and 9, he quotes Psalm 45. Uh, but about the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. Your righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. Again, that's from Psalm 45. Jesus Christ sits alone on his throne. He has been anointed, called, blessed by God the Father because he is God. Jesus is superior because he is God's anointed one. Uh, next, Jesus is superior because he is the creator. We've, we've touched on this, but the, psalm, or the uh, author of Hebrews goes back to Psalm 102 and he, where it describes God as the creator. And he also says, verse 10, In the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. There you all will wear out, wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment. They will be changed but you remain the same and your years will never end. You see, Jesus existed before the universe because he created the universe. This universe, it's, it's a physical creation. It is disintegrating, but not Jesus. Jesus is eternal. He has no beginning and he has no end. And not lastly, Jesus is superior because he rules the universe Verse 13, pulls from Psalm 110, so good to get in context. He says, to which of the angels did God ever say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? We are told Jesus sat down on his throne. His work is finished. The position is his forever. The sun is now sitting in heaven, waiting for the world to see his ultimate final victory. He sees it. We don't yet see it. The cross of Christ, his death, won the beginning of this ultimate triumph. And the fulfillment awaits until King Jesus returns for his people. And one day, even God's enemies, all those who deny and defy Christ, will find their place at Christ's feet for eternal judgment when God's grand purposes are for creation are fulfilled. In verse 14 again, it says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Isn't that an incredible thought? Your salvation and the salvation of the world is God's greatest desire. He is so passionate about your relationship with him that throughout the Bible we see God sending angels to protect and encourage, to guide, deliver, and even discipline. So will this passage make you watchful and thankful for God? Well, a missionary, John Patton and his wife were thankful. In 1850, they were missionaries to the cannibalistic natives in Tana. And one night, hostile natives surrounded their home, intent to burn them alive. John and his wife prayed fervently through that terror-filled night for God's deliverance. 
when daylight came, their attackers were gone. And a, a year later, the tribal chief became a believer in Jesus Christ. And so John had a conversation. He asked the chief about that horrible night. He said, what kept you from killing us? And the chief responded, who were all those men around you last night, that night? Who, who were all those men? Oh, Patton knew of, of no, they knew no, he knew no men were present, but the chief said there were hundreds of big men in shining garments with drawn swords circling the mission house. Isn't that a remarkable witness to the role of angels and even more to the glorious Son of God who sent them? God who sent angels to protect his people, ministering spirits sent to those who will inherit salvation. Knowing Jesus Christ is superior to anything or anyone on earth or in heaven, who will you trust? Who will you entrust your future to? Will you take your concerns and your hopes, your fears, your questions, your dreams, will you take them to Jesus? Who will you pray to? Jesus is always the answer. And will you talk with Jesus? God made you as a gift to Jesus. So how will you treasure your glorious relationship with Jesus today? Did you know all this was in the first chapter of Hebrews? Well, I didn't. So keep on with me. We'll continue to enjoy what God has. But for now, here is what I pray you believe from Hebrews chapter 1. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, reigns supreme over the universe. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, reigns supreme over the universe. Will you please pray with me? Mighty God, thank you for making our great Savior Jesus victorious over everything. You have proven yourself trustworthy and worthy of all of our worship. Please forgive us when we divert our eyes to anything else. Lord, help us to treasure these scriptures, write them on our hearts, and help us to really live them out with your passion on earth as we minister to others and as we proclaim your faith, your, your goodness, uh, your salvation message to the world. In your precious name, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you.